Hey guys, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and welcome to If Tank, 10 interesting facts that almost nobody knows. So, let's get started. Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, and kohlrabi. Most people probably wouldn't think that these plants have much of a connection with each other. Surprisingly enough though, all of them are artificially selected variations of the same exact plant, Brassica oleracea, also known as wild mustard. When people in Europe first domesticated this plant, they started breeding for certain traits or phenotypes to be more expressive. Big leaves for kale, tightly wrapped up leaf buds for cabbage and Brussels sprouts, modified flowers for broccoli and cauliflower, and a wide stem for kohlrabi. And yes, there are plenty other variations that I didn't bring up, but it's interesting that they are all the same exact species, just genetically modified variations. Flying in planes can make some of us uneasy. Even though it is still the safest way to travel, when things do go wrong, they tend to be quite devastating. But did you know by simply having the passenger seats face the rear of the plane, you are 10 times more likely to survive a plane crash? And of course, this is context specific. If you are on a plane that's going nose first into the ground, it's not gonna make any difference what position your seat is in. But if you're experiencing a more common type of crash landing where the plane is in a horizontal position, just looking at it from a logical perspective where your back and the cushioned seat are taking the brunt of the force, rather than your chest, a seatbelt, and potentially the seat in front of you, obviously having rear facing seats is safer. But even with that, surveys show that people are much less comfortable being in a plane with rear-facing seats. So, you're probably not gonna see them all that often. But you know, I, I kinda want them. You're 10 times more likely to survive a plane crash. Where do I sign up? Having a name is really useful if you think about it. It can be used for identification, organization, finding connections, you name it. But humans are not the only organisms to understand the value of naming each other. One of the best examples from the wild are the green rumped parallettes. These little parrots native to South America and the Caribbean actually have specialized names for each other. Names that are typically unique from family to family. Scientist Carl Berg more amazingly discovered that these names are not biologically programmed in the birds, they are actually learned behaviors. He discovered this by replacing the eggs of two different families in a observing whether the chicks would have names more similar to their biological parents or names more similar to their adopted parents. And his research proved that the chicks had names more similar to their adopted parents than their biological parents. So what this means is that these little parrots pass on the idea of naming each other to the next generation. And they use this in their simple little language to be able to ask each other questions and identify one another without ever needing to see each other. They're definitely smart little buggers, that's for sure. Australia is always getting a bad rep for its dangerous animals. Huge venomous spiders, giant scorpions, snakes all over the place, shark infested waters, crocodiles, jellyfish, you name it. But in all reality, there are not many casualties annually as a result of these animals. There's been roughly 40 reported snake-related deaths since 1980. There hasn't been a single death due to a spider bite since 1979 due to the advent of antivenom. Roughly two people die a year from sharks, maybe one a year from crocodiles, and there's only been 66 reported deaths due to jellyfish since 1883. So with that said, what non-human animal in Australia is responsible for the most deaths annually? This is gonna sound crazy, but Horses. Horses are Australia's deadliest animal in terms of casualties caused by them annually. There are approximately 20 horse-related deaths in Australia annually. Horses are then followed by cows and then dogs in terms of casualties caused by a specific animal annually. And thank goodness none of those animals live anywhere else but Australia, huh? Dodged a bullet there, guys. Now, most people have heard the name The Lone Ranger. Starting out as a radio broadcast for WXYZ Radio in Detroit, Michigan, it became wildly popular in the 1930s, going on to spawn multiple movies, even the most recent one. It's interesting that most people didn't know that the actual Lone Ranger character himself is based after a black American U.S. Deputy Marshal. His name was Bass Reeves, and he was a black American who escaped slavery during the chaos of the Civil War fleeing westward to live with Native Americans, quite peacefully, in what is now Oklahoma. Not too long after the war, Reeves went on to become a U.S. Deputy Marshal for Arkansas and Indian Territory, being one of the first African Americans to hold the position. Reeves and the Lone Ranger's story are connected due to both fought crime, Reeves was known to have been a master of disguise, both were expert crack shots, and both rode a white horse. 
Both had a close Native American friend who was an expert tracker and both had a trademark involving silver. And for the last nail in the connection coffin, Reeves went on to capture over 3,000 criminals, a majority of whom were sent to a federal prison in Detroit, Michigan. And that's where it's believed the legend of the Lone Ranger developed, eventually having an adaptation finding its way on WXYZ Radio as a radio broadcast. And to be honest, I think a Lone Ranger movie based off of Reeves' life would make a heck of a lot better movie. When people think about single-celled organisms, they tend to immediately think about microscopic beings. But did you know one, if not the largest, single-celled organism on Earth is known as bubble algae? On average, they can grow up to 4 centimeters in diameter, some being as big as 5 centimeters. That's 2 inches of single-celled amazingness. They are multinucleic cells, which means they contain more than one nucleus, which they use to help aid in reproduction. Reproduction by means of segregative cell division. This is where rhizoids, little fibers that help hold the cell onto things, go on to make new bubbles by having a nucleus from the mother cell going into that and then becoming a daughter cell separating itself from the mother cell. Whew, that was a mouthful. They are typically found in tropical waters but have been found in all oceans around the world. And it's definitely amazing how nature always seems to be pushing the limits to what is possible. Have you ever heard anybody say that a single volcano going off will produce more air pollution than all of humanity has ever produced? Or something along those lines. Well, it's time to put that myth to rest. Though it is true that volcanoes release tremendous amounts of pollution into the air, most notably with CO2, which is a major contributor to global warming, there is still a pretty big misconception in terms of the amount of pollution produced by volcanoes and by people. Pollution caused by volcanoes has been relatively constant throughout history. Annually, volcanoes are responsible for about 100 million tons of CO2 being released into the atmosphere. That's quite a bit, but humans on the other hand are responsible for about 10 billion tons of CO2 being released into the atmosphere annually. That means that volcanoes are responsible for about 1% of all the CO2 that is put into the atmosphere annually. Massive volcanoes can also release large quantities of SO2 into the atmosphere at once, and when this happens it can actually cause a cooling effect on the planet as seen with Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines in 1991. And according to volcanologists, if it wasn't for volcanoes, the world would actually be a lot warmer than it is now. The discovery of Neptune is pretty unique in contrast to all of the other planets that have been discovered in our solar system. And that's part of the reason why I think it's the coolest planet in the solar system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get it? Yeah, I've, I've waited my whole life to do that joke. Guys, thanks for watching Think Fact. I am now complete my math goals. Bye. But in all seriousness, the reason for this is we found Neptune with math before we ever found it with our eyes. Neptune's story starts with the discovery of Uranus in 1781. Astronomers noticed a wobble in Uranus's orbit. A wobble in Uranus. Whew, I can't even make this stuff up, guys. A wobble as if it was being pulled by another planet, but the wobble was being observed while Uranus was away from Saturn and Jupiter. Two astronomers independently mathematically calculated the mass and the position that said planet would have to be in order to induce wobbling on Uranus. Those two astronomers were John Adams, excuse me, John Couch Adams from Great Britain, and Urbain Lavrère from France. Adams sent his hypothesis and instructions to the Greenwich Observatory, where they ignored it because they didn't think it was possible. Lavarrer sent his hypothesis and instructions to the Berlin Observatory, where it only took them about an hour to find the planet Neptune, with it only being a fraction of a degree off of his mathematical calculations. Proving that mathematics is a very useful tool when trying to understand the universe around us, and that makes Neptune pretty special. The British Empire was a sight to behold, being arguably the most powerful empire for almost 300 years. While us Americans were trying not to get dysentery on the Oregon Trail, the British were fighting and ruling most of the world. So much so that as of today, only 22 countries out of the almost 200 on Earth today can claim that the British Empire has never invaded their territory. A list so short, I can actually name them off to you. These countries are, in alphabetical order of course, Andorra, Belarus, Bolivia, Burundi, Central African Republic, Chad, Congo, Guatemala, Ivory Coast, Kyrgyzstan, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Mali, Marshall Islands, Monaco, Mongolia, Paraguay, San Tome and Principe, Sweden, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Vatican. City. And I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that these countries managed to not get invaded by the British Empire, or the fact that the British Empire managed to invade so many countries and so much territory that as of today only 22 countries can claim that they've never been invaded by the British Empire. <laughs> I guess the United States has got some catching up to do. <laughs> nah, no, I take it back, please God, no, don't. 
And lastly, your body has what scientists call a second brain located in your stomach. This is due to its independence from the brain and the spinal cord and the fact that it has over a hundred million neuron cells within it. That's more than the average neuron cells in a house cat. It actually has the second highest concentration of neuron cells within your body, feeding both the nervous system and your spinal column. And being so, it can work completely independent from your brain. Now this little brain doesn't do a lot of complex thinking, and it's spread out through your digestive system. But it still works by processing information and deciding on how to mix, contract, absorb, and break down foods that you eat in order to obtain vitamins and nutrients that you need. Your stomach is a problem solver. And further studies and investigations are being done by scientists to understand how food impacts our mood and feelings, and how this neuron network in our stomach could play a bigger part in how food impacts us than we ever may have thought. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 10 interesting facts that almost nobody knows. My question for you guys is, is what is the IQ of your stomach? And the serious question is, which fact or facts did you find the most interesting? My personal favorites were the one over Great Britain and the most death-inducing animal in Australia. But I like them all, because that's why I picked them. And with all that said and done, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It would really help me out. And if you are interested in my content, please feel free to subscribe to stay updated. My last video was about genetically altering humans to make us healthier or even potentially better. If you find it interesting, please feel free to check it out. You just may like what you find. Have a good one.